Hey, Luria, welcome to the show. Super excited to have you here. I am so excited. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure. I mean, we were talking too much before the show and like normally happens, you end up chatting and then you're like, oh man, we got to hit that record button because there's too many gems being passed around. So super excited for those that don't know you. I gave a bit of an intro before the show, but why don't you tell us a little bit about you, what you do, and essentially what is this live streaming thing? (laughs) <laughs> okay, so a bit about me, what I do. I actually help people start, grow, and monetize their own live streaming shows. So if you are a brand or business, uh, I help you use live streaming strategically to actually grow instead of just jumping on board with something that everybody's talking about and saying that you should do. We, we really help you figure out why you should do it and how you should go about it so that it's effective. Excellent, yeah, no, that's that's super crucial. I mean, that's the thing with pretty much any tactic, right? People hear about yeah. this new buzzword and they're like, oh, I gotta do it, and then they go into it and 30 days later, they're not doing it anymore because they have no why and they don't know what they're doing. So how exactly. did you get into live streaming? Um, so I've been doing video and live streaming since 2005. So it was I was one of the early people who ever did a video podcast. So before the iPhones actually came out, uh, there was this thing called Video iPod. Uh, and when that thing was announced in 2005, um, I jumped on board because uh, I was a total geek at that point, And I was just curious about how this all worked from a technical standpoint. And um, it turns out uh, people enjoyed what I did. And I figured out quickly that I could turn it into a business. And so I did. Cool. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And since then, so when did you sort of start with live streaming pros? And obviously we're going to have to, we'll talk about that in a minute there, but when did that sort of come to life? And that's actually fairly recent in the last year. Um, so I decided, you know, after, after 10 years of, of building my own community with video and live streaming, um, and I've had over, you know, 1 billion video views and, uh, 2 million social media followers. And so I've had a lot of success with what I've, what I've done in the past. I just decided, you know, I didn't want to keep going down the same path, but I wanted to to help others do the same things. And so I decided a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago so that I wanted to just give <laughs> instead of keep doing only the same things. So, um, yeah, I decided uh, at the beginning of this year to really focus in on live streaming because of where the market has been. You know, it's not a new thing by any means. Like I said, I've been doing it for you know 11 years. Yeah. But um, but the accessibility and the ease of use mm-hmm. is definitely the new factor. And so that now everybody can take advantage of it and see the benefits like what I've seen in, in it for, for so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I totally, I totally appreciate that. And I mean, I think that's what's so exciting about live streaming is that it's, it may not be new, but it feels new because we're kind of on the frontier where all of these other markets are being saturated in that. But live streaming still feels, at least to me, because I've, I've got to sort of cautiously admit here that I've been slow to jump in because it scares me a little bit. So I tried Actually, with why Periscope. Why does it scare you? <laughs> why does it scare me? I think the... The fact that I'm either, I like to be really well prepared. So the thought of sort of going out there and not having everything structured scares me a little bit. I think also- Oh, I can totally fix that for you, Adam. Okay, there you go. There you go, (laughs) we'll have to chat. And then the other one, I think I have this fear of starting it and having nobody show up or interacting with a blank audience. Like at least, you know, when you're doing a video, you know there's no one there yet. They're gonna watch it later so that it becomes a little more comfortable, but. Yeah, I totally understand that. And that's, it's actually fairly common. Both of those things are very common fears Mm -hmm. going into live streaming. So let's talk about why they're not really all that, that important to worry about. Perfect. Um, So the benefits of live streaming are definitely to, to, to build the no like and trust factor with your audience. Mm -hmm. I mean, they like no other marketing. Can you build your current customer base um, trust? and also build a new customer base and create loyalty, create uh, that trust and get people so involved and engaged with you. There is nothing else Hmm. like it, even video, which I have also built my career on, right? But like live streaming takes that up a notch. So it's the best thing that you have other than face-to-face, which right. we know we can't do that internationally, right? Yeah, yeah. a lot of, a <laughs> lot of overseas even, flights, yeah. Right, or even locally. Um, yeah. You still can't do the same locally. So live streaming works for both 
online businesses and local businesses. And actually some of the biggest success stories I've seen have been local businesses. Mm -hmm. So it really gets that engagement going. It creates that loyalty. And when you do it right, you can, you can increase your bottom line. It's just Mm. (laughs) like, it it just happens. Um, and and there are lots of reasons of why and how and all of that with, um, but you know, this is, this is one of the best marketing tools that you can, you can do, but you do have to think about it as a marketing tool. Um, you, you have to think about it as an engagement, um, uh, an engagement, uh, effort, mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess is yep. the right word. Um, and then you also have to think of it as a marketing tool. So when you, when you think about it from that perspective, so your fears were, uh, not being prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually, well, I have a run of show. It's a spreadsheet that I think through what I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. And I follow that, that run of show. I, I say, okay, I want to talk about this first and then I move on to the next thing and then mm-hmm. I move on to the next things, right? So imagine if you had three parts to your live stream and in between each part, part one and part two, you engage with the audience a little bit. Right. And then between part two and part three, you engage with the audience a little bit. So mm-hmm. you're delivering value and then you're getting engagement at the same time. And it's a beautiful combination Mm -hmm. that really works. But even if you didn't have anybody show up, it doesn't really matter because what you can do with that is you deliver the value and you focus on just pouring your knowledge out there, even if there's a zero viewers showing up, right? Which can happen at first, right? Like, so that that is a possibility, but all you have to focus on is what you do after the video as well. Hmm because then you're gonna repurpose the content and you're going to run ads to it and you're going to post it on your blog. You can post it as a podcast. You can do so much with that video, that live video, that um, you're guaranteed to get, you know, more uh, views after the fact, Hmm. as well as, you know, even, even over what you get live. So you're working it together with both of those benefits. Cool. Oh man, I think you hit the nail on the head there. That's that's the magic word is that repurpose word where you're able yeah. to take, I mean, you do all that work and you do all that stuff and then yeah, I think I think that is probably one of the most appealing things is for people the ability to sort of create that one piece of content and then sort of splice it and syndicate it across all the other networks. Absolutely. Why do you think it works so well for local businesses? Is it just because it's such an untapped resource that people aren't doing yet or... So uh, a couple of things. So one is that after live, the afterlife of the video, mm-hmm. um, which is running ads to it locally, mm-hmm. right? So when you go live, you're, you, you are live internationally, mm-hmm. unless you choose certain groups to, to go live to that you've set up previously. Um, but then you have the ad platform on Facebook, for instance. If you use Facebook Live, if you're a local business, that's what you should be using. Right. Um, don't worry about Periscope or anything else because this gives you so much more uh, control. Mm-hmm. And so you can run ads specifically to your local market after the fact. And I have seen um, like a restaurant, for instance, in a small town um, who, you know, they, they didn't have much traction. They didn't have any customers. They were kind of hidden away. Mm-hmm. And they started doing just like daily um, specials on the live video yeah. and to be honest, they didn't do it right. They yeah. didn't do everything yeah. that I would want them to do, yeah. but they did it and they started filling the restaurant and the chef herself became like a micro celebrity yeah. in town. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, they're, they're, once people start being aware of this and with that engagement factor and the fact that they are already on Facebook. And so as they see you scroll past, that excites them. Mm-hmm. People love to um, be proud of the city that they live in. Yeah. Just think about it from a sports perspective, you know, anything like that, right? People take ownership of their city. So mm-hmm. from a local perspective, you tap into that power hmm. and you, it becomes powerful. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Especially, I think, when people see you on that video, even if, like you said, it's it may not be done perfectly. Just the, you're fact, right. that you're, the fact that you're out there. And I mean, we've all seen those videos, but there's some interesting studies even that they've got the, the highly polished videos and then they've got that shaky handheld iPhone video and it converts like 100% better. So... You know what? Like there's a time for polished and there's a time for raw mm-hmm. and you have to work both of them 
together. Mm -hmm. So that actually, so all of these different, these these three things are kind of what I look at as a three part live video strategy. Perfect. Um, And so that, that consistency where you have like a weekly show where you say, Hey, I'm going to be here every Monday at 10 AM and you show up, you come join me and we'll have this conversation. Um, I will provide value each and every week, whether that's um, you know, talking about the weekly special or yeah. whether that's talking about marketing, yeah. uh, whether that's tar- talking about the, the news of the golf, uh, new, the golf news of the week, yeah. whatever yeah, that yeah. is. Right. Um, so that is your weekly show. Yeah. And that builds consistency that allows your viewers to put it on their calendar hmm. and it builds trust because you're saying that you're going to be somewhere and you are Hmm. how many other businesses how many of your competition is failing to deliver on what they say they're going to do right yeah so that just immediately builds trust and then the part two is your randomness so Mm -hmm. uh just going live randomly like rogue renegade yeah i I call them selfie streams just going live from the phone yeah and so you do that to build a relationship and to to bring in the human element of what you uh who you are as a brand and a person Mm -hmm. and so you can like if you get a new dog look show me the puppy right if if you are going to food festival show me the bacon you know whatever (laughs) yeah i think that should be the title of that's it yes show me the bacon (laughs) Um, so, you know, you, you work those two things together. And, yeah. and the reason I said that after what you said is that your consistent show can be polished. It can mm-hmm. be not polished from a personality perspective because you always want to have the personality, right? but from a, a presenting standpoint, right? It can, it can look good. It can look professional. You can present a really good front for your business. Cool. And then the random streams are those raw streams that convert yeah. well, right? Yeah. Like, cause people love that interactivity they love the up and close personal feeling so you work those two things together and you've got a brilliant strategy and then on top of that is what we talked about with the after live which is the repurposing the afterlife of that video so essentially for our strategy we've got consistency we've got randomness and then we've got after live or the repurposing section of it ah perfect okay i got it so I think what we need to do is we may have jumped past what live streaming is. I was just thinking, I was like, I bet we've got all this strategy. We've got, we've got some benefits, but I, I know there's someone out there listening right now. Who's like, I don't even know what this is. What, what is this live streaming thing that you're even talking about? So maybe we should dive into what it is and then some of the equipment around it or what someone would need to use if they wanted to get into it. My apologies. So oh, all good. That's, <laughs> we just got going. We did. Um, yeah. So live streaming is the ability for you at its basic level for you to go live on your phone and literally have a real time video conversation with whoever wants to watch. Um, So you can go live on Facebook, Periscope, you can go live on YouTube live, not from your phone yet, but that's coming. Uh, Even Instagram now has live video. So you can go live on different platforms. So wherever your audience is, and what this what this is, is is a real time conversation. So you are on video, and you are talking to people, they chat back at you. Mm -hmm. And then you respond rather than chatting back at them, you respond um, audibly and you know, with the answer uh, on video. So that's what it is that it's basic form. And there, there are many different levels of it and, and different things that you can do. Perfect. No, that sounds that sounds excellent. And I mean, that sort of does lead us into the next point of, yeah, you can see the benefits of doing something like that, because it is so authentic. And it does allow you to yeah, to really put yourself out there and show the the humans behind the business, which yeah, are... and and people demand that now. So we live in a time and an age right now that people do not want a corporate environment. Yes, they will not accept it. They will not allow it to to be in their life. Right. Yeah. So you can you can imagine that um, you know if you look at any Twitter account of any corporate like McDonald's for example mm-hmm. has like millions of followers. Why do they have millions of followers if people don't want corporate? Because they've run coupon, Mm. you know, uh, you know, uh, giveaways, things like that. But if you look at their regular interaction and engagement, they have zilch. Yeah. So, um, 
and I'm not talking specifically about McDonald's. The, I don't know what their engagement is like off the top of my head, but yeah. <laughs> just yeah. generally speaking, right? Those other mega corporations, essentially yeah. the, the sort of faceless brand, uh, whatever you think of. Yeah, those those giant, yeah, Fortune right. 50 companies or whatever. So And so now with the world that we live in, people want to follow human beings. They want to follow people that, that make them feel okay to have faults. Um, that make them okay to you know, feel feel comfortable talking to um, the celebrity world that we used to live in, where everybody's on a pedestal, mm. is falling down, and that is not the the future. Right, which is beautiful, which is so good. It's I I don't know. I found Lucky. it. Yeah, it's been so much more fun these last yeah know, these last few years. We've sort of noticed the trend, and yeah, you get to you get to have these conversations. You get to be real. You get to slip up and make a few mistakes, and and people forgive you. So. Yeah, you know, I had um, I, I deal with this all the time with my clients and students, people who just are fearful of slipping up, mm -hmm. you know, of saying something stupid or wrong or whatever. And I say stupid stuff all day long. I am live <laughs> every single day, multiple yep. times a day often. And I say stupid stuff all the time, and yet my business is thriving. So yeah. <laughs> like, let that be a lesson to you. That's it. It you, doesn't matter. <laughs> you've got to walk that balance, right? Yeah, right. that's fantastic. That's fantastic. So how if if someone wants to get involved with live streaming, they've decided, okay, look, I've, I know that it's going to provide some more trust. I'm sure that I can carve out some time to do this consistently and randomly. Uh, how do I even get started? Like, where do I even start? So um, there are four levels of live streaming that will kind of help you determine, you know, where you are, what you should start with. Um, so level one is just going live from your phone. That's hmm. literally free. It's the simplest. It's the easiest. Um, and so you just hit the go live button on your Facebook app or Periscope app or whatever. And you go live and you talk to the camera, preferably in landscape mode, not landscape. portrait. Check. So side, so sideways for those that sideways. don't have the, yes. Okay. Exactly. Now there are some stipulations to that, which I have a video all about because like different, uh, phones yeah. need, and different platforms need different things. So you have to pay attention to that. But I have a video on live streaming pros about that. Perfect. Um, so, <laughs> you know, you go live from your phone and it's super simple. Now the drawback to that is the shaky cam video, mm -hmm. um, the up the nose shots yeah. and the, raw audio that sometimes can be hurtful to the ears. Okay. Um, so that's okay, I do that often. I actually do that for my random streams hmm. with level one. But then you can go to level two, which is adding some gear to your phone. There's things like a wide angle lens, uh, a microphone so that you have better quality audio. Audio is the number one thing that will stop people from watching your videos, okay. whether that's recorded videos or live streams, um, and because it's just, our ears are precious. <laughs> we don't yeah. want to listen to bad audio. Yes. Um, so that, you know, having some gear and literally you can get a kit for a couple hundred dollars. And so it's not a big investment and it's super simple to put together. And you just put your phone in this little contraption, yeah. <laughs> if you will, yeah. and you take it with you on the go. You have more professional looking live stream, but it's still raw and up close and personal. Perfect. Um, and so there's that. And then the level three is going live from your desktop computer. Okay. So this is having, um, you know, maybe using your webcam or an external camera if you have the right gear. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can do a little bit more fancy stuff, like you can bring in a recorded video that you wanna play, mm -hmm. or you can do an interview on Skype, or you can um, have lower thirds, which are like the title yeah, graphics yeah. across the bottom of the screen, so that it says your name and your website address. And so you can do a little bit more fancy stuff with it, right? Mm -hmm. And then level four is uh, going live from a dedicated machine. So this is definitely more uh, more costly, but it is the thing that will give you TV quality streams. Yeah. Level three has a lot of potential problems mm -hmm. and a lot of potential errors from a technical standpoint. So level four is if you want TV quality, really professional streams, this is the way to go. Gotcha, perfect. So what That's are kind what of the associated about. costs? Obviously the phone is you've got your phone. If you want some gear, maybe a couple hundred bucks. Uh, desktop and dedicated machine for those that are really ready to, to up their game. 
So level three is a, is a complicated one and okay. it doesn't have a specific budget because it depends on what you already have. Right. But let's say you had to get everything from scratch, including a good enough computer because your computer does have to be a newer machine. It has mm -hmm. to be kind of a, almost a beast in order to handle yeah. doing this. And so you know, you're looking at a few thousand dollars okay. to, to do that if you had to buy everything. Yeah, perfect, um, perfect. And then, you know, and that could actually go up, right? It could be a few thousand dollars yeah. to, you know, yeah. several thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, and then level four, you're looking at about $15,000. Okay, so like proper TV setup established yeah. business. So yeah, that sounds perfect. I mean, that's great to have the levels there because then it allows people to sort of dip their toes in the water, work their way up and progress and start to see. Because exactly. I have the feeling, and, and this is why I've got no excuse for not having done this, is I have the feeling <laughs> that when people do this, they're going to see a return on investment. They're going to see positive feedback from the community. They're going to see an increase in revenue and an increase in engagement and brand awareness. And I know these things are true. So <laughs> yeah, you know, it is, it is so so true you know like uh, aj who who yeah. introduced us yeah. um he he has done only raw streams so yeah. far we're setting him up with some more professional systems um he's going to level four but like this the raw streams that he's done have already brought in a lot of revenue for him yeah so you know even if you're just doing raw even if you're he's not even on level two i haven't yeah. given it like so the people are using whatever level you just have to make sure that you have the right strategies behind it and that you're offering tremendous value and that you're being human mm -hmm. and connecting to people and talking to people caring and that you have of course a call to action in your video <laughs> yes incredibly important right how many times have we seen that people have good things and then no call to action so oh, i think man. that's a huge I had a point had a student get like 5,000 live views yeah. and she had no call to action. I was oh, like, no. <laughs> a waste, a waste. Next yeah. time, next time. By no, the that's... way, on those four levels, I do have a quiz that helps people determine Perfect. like what those, where they fit in as a live streamer. So like based on their goals, what are they trying to accomplish? And there's a guide that will help them help you get the right gear for for you. Excellent, so. excellent. Is there is there an easy address or regardless, we'll put it in the show notes. But if there's something people can go to right now, yeah, livestreamingpros.com/quiz. Livestreamingpros.com forward slash quiz. So we'll make sure to link that up in the show notes as well, because yeah, that'll be an excellent place to start to figure out how you're going to dive in there. Uh, I'll also send a link to the um, to AJ Rivera as well, because yeah, it'd be good for yeah. people to follow him as well and see see his transition as he moves yeah, up the totally. levels. And you know, what's interesting is, is the thing that he's pointed out is, is not only getting sales, but he's getting more qualified leads, yeah. which is a really important thing for your business. You, you don't want to stream everywhere. And this yeah. is something I talk about, I harp on all the time. I don't care how many views you get. Yeah. Even if you have one person watching you, if that one person is a sale, turns into a sale at some point down the road, mm -hmm. that is worth it. If you have 15 people, often people are like, oh, my stream sucked. Yeah. I don't care. If you had 15 people standing in front of you in your office, would you be thrilled to be talking to those 15 people? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I don't care about numbers. I care about results. Right. Yeah. Quality over quantity every time. Absolutely. Yeah. That's perfect. All right, Luria, is there anything that I didn't ask you that I should have? Is there any sort of gem in there <laughs> that we should really hit and provide everyone? Um, you know, I think I, I think let's uh, talk a little bit more about that call to action. Um, you know, this is something that I think people are scared of um, in a live environment. With uh, oftentimes, if you're doing other things, first of all, if you're just starting out call to actions are scary as hell. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you've been doing it a while, you you often do things where you can have a call to action, but it's prepared, it's thought out, right? So live video provides a beautiful way to do a call to action without feeling like you're selling or that you're pitching anything because what it is at its core is a conversation, right? So when you're providing value and you're focused on giving and um, helping people succeed in whatever way that you help people succeed, yeah. then you are help. You are you have every opportunity to say, you know what, this is this is what I have to give. Yeah. 
if you want more, I would love to help you out. You know, I have this, I have this other thing that you can take advantage of. Um, and I can help you further along. Right. And so from, from just when you're just talking, that comes out so naturally right. and that just comes out so genuine as long as you are genuine yeah. <laughs> and yeah. um, you don't have to worry so much about the pitch or the sale or any of that. It just happens naturally and people, after you have spent time giving to them and they are engaging with you and you're calling people's names out and you're caring about people specifically, they want to spend money with you. Yeah. So it's not a big deal. It's just, um, you just have to actually do it. And oftentimes what I find is I find ways to actually do call to actions throughout the entire show without pitching yeah. because people will ask me a specific question and I'm like, okay, well, here's the answer, but I actually have a course on that specifically, you know, like, yeah. so if you want, if you want the whole answer, like, cause I don't have time to spend hours with you here. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it flows naturally. It's easy and people have no problem with it whatsoever. Yeah, no, I think that's perfect. I mean, if you're giving away that value, you automatically have that reciprocity, right? Where yeah. people want to give back. And then the call to action, if it becomes like, if you're giving value and like you mentioned, yeah, you don't, we don't have all day. You can't live stream 24 hours a day, although I'm sure you're getting there, but, uh, <laughs> but the call to action becomes the next logical step in, in the relationship. Like, obviously if you've enjoyed this, then you're going to want to check this out. That's simply the next logical step in the, in the close. So yeah, you don't have to think about it as hard pitching someone. You just, have to offer them the next step for the for them to take exactly and and from a local perspective you know that that call to action can simply be um to to come by and take advantage of your special of the day or uh if you have a freebie of some kind or you're you're appearing at a festival you know like mm -hmm. the call to action can be just to take better advantage of you from a local perspective, but you can do so much. Um, you can do special events specifically for your live streams and things like that, that yeah. you can add to. Excellent. Okay. That's perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, thank you. I mean, that's, that's yeah. tremendous. We've got, I've got pages of notes here. Oh, I've got, I can go on about this all day. <laughs> I've got, yeah. And, and I've got no excuse now, which is probably the hardest thing is that I've all obviously, right. I've got to have to lead by example here. And, and here's what we're going to do. What day are we starting? Oh, that's terrifying. Well, we're <laughs> recording at the, we're mid-December recording now. So this episode is going to launch probably around the first week of January. So, oh, wow. How about we say, let me, let me give myself a bit of a buffer. How about we say mid-January? All right. January 15th, you are launching your first live stream. January 15th. I am holding you to it. You will have to, let me check the, you know what? We'll check the calendar <laughs> as we know chat. What that is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's a Sunday and uh, let's see, January 15th. This is what I do. I make people uncomfortable and commit. <laughs> oh yeah, especially, at least we're not live, but we're not gonna, we won't edit this out anyway. So it looks like January, why don't we say 16, 17, 18, January 18th. Oh, come on, you're pushing it out Okay, too okay, far. We'll, we'll go. Here's the thing, here's the thing, Adam, and yeah. I, cause I don't want people to take what you're doing um, and do it themselves. Yes. So I'm just gonna call you out you, on it. You go ahead, yep. Yeah. These, these are things you just have to get started doing. Okay. So here's here's what I want you to do instead okay. of January 18th. We can we can launch your weekly show on January 18th. Okay. But before that, I want you to start going live this week. This I want week. you to start going live from your phone and I will get you a kit. I'll tell you what to get for the okay. kit if you want to, but okay. like just from your phone, you are going live this weekend. Oh, wow. Okay, you know what? I will. <laughs> You have my word. I will go live this weekend. We will okay. find what you'll have to email me the details on the kit. I'll put in the order and, uh, and we'll make it happen. Cause this, this is the thing. Like you will push these things off, right? As it, I try. There is some fear, but you just have to get started. And I don't care if it's perfect. I don't care if you, you know, you should go live for like 20 minutes at Pete. That's where your peak comes in. Okay. So don't, don't just think it's a short and sweet thing. Yeah. So get in there and just do it. Even if you can't go 20 minutes, if you freak out, yeah, that's okay. But at least you've done it. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Well, that <laughs> sounds oh, good for you for, for making me do it. No, that's absolutely crucial. And I know it's so important. So what I hope as well is that this can lead uh, who's listening right now to go do that as well, because it is, yeah. I know it's crucial. I mean, and I know it's going to have a positive impact. So, all right. You'll have to send me the details. I'll make sure to put them in the show notes as well, as well as the link to livestreamingpros.com and especially forward slash quiz. And Luria, is that the best place for people to get a hold of you if they want to learn more? 
Yeah, absolutely. So livestreamingpros.com, you can find all of our shows and our quiz and all of that. But we're live on facebook.com slash livestreamingpros every single weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific. 10 a.m. Pacific. Perfect. I've been watching the shows there as well, trying to pick up the tips that I can, and they've been phenomenal, which is why I'm, I'm so excited to have you here. And thank you so much for sharing all this amazing information and for holding me to task and making <laughs> me do what I know I should do. So uh, We're going to yeah, do it together. <laughs> we'll do it together. I appreciate it. Well, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. All right. So now I'll hit the stop <laughs> record. Oh, man.